Welcome back to another lesson. Today we are going to talk about the genital urinary system, also known as your genital system. Some people simply call it your nervous system, which I probably use throughout the lesson. Just like other body systems, you need to know the different parts of the system, the general function, and also the function of each part, each structure and organ of the system. And lastly, T's expect you to know um, the relationship between the cardiovascular system and the urinary system. Why is that? Uh, we're going to talk about um, in, in a few minutes. Okay, so the general function for the urinary system is excretion, right? Because we um, perform uh, metabolism every second, right? 24-7. Um, so that generates a lot of metabolic waste. For example, um, urea. You may remember from the previous lesson on um, the digestive system where we talk about the liver, right? That the liver um, carries out deamination to remove the um, amino group from the amino acid as a, a normal step in metabolizing proteins, right? Uh, remove this from amino acid, amino acid. And this generates ammonia, but ammonia is toxic, right? So the liver will further convert uh, ammonia to urea. And eventually urea will be um, filtered by the urinary system. It gets into the urine, and this is how you can get rid of urea. Now, there are, there are also some other metabolic wastes, for example, uric acid, which is a waste from our body metabolizing nucleic acids. All right, now besides excretion, the urinary system, and really it's, it's the kidneys that will also maintain homeostasis. Um, and the kidneys keep balance of a few things, for example, water, right, or body fluid. Electrolytes, so those are kind of commonly known as salt, right? And also acid and base, which is basically uh, a balance about pH. Now, you don't need to memorize all those things, but there are a couple things that the API mentions in the study manual. So we'll talk about those things in detail. Now, they did not mention the acid base, which is the pH balance. Um, and also, I haven't seen any questions on that. So I think that might be a little bit less important. And I would kind of focus on maybe water and electrolytes because those are also related to the maintenance of blood pressure. Like we talked about earlier, it's also called the genital urinary system. That's because some of the structures are kind of shared between the urinary system and the reproductive system. For example, urethra. Now, in males, urethra, urethra goes through penis, and urethra uh, does uh, transport both urine and sperm. Okay, so that's in males. So it kind of makes sense that we call it, you know, genital urinary system. All right, now let's look at some of the basic anatomy of the urinary system to kind of know where the, the different structures are located. So this system consists of two kidneys. So you can see the two kidneys are over here. Um, usually the kidneys kind of line against the back. So when we do that section, we uh, almost always have to, you know, remove some of the structures that are more on the anterior, like remove the intestines, remove the liver, and then you can see the kidney. Uh, ureters, so ureters are these tubes that come out of the kidneys and transport urine down to the urinary bladder, right? So you have one ure ureter uh, for each kidney. So there you go. So these are the ureters. Urinary bladder, you just have one urinary bladder that stores urine until you think it's okay to uh, get rid of it, right? So in, in uh, humans, usually we have uh, two sphincters that can control the opening of bladder, which we'll talk about later. So there is one sphincter that's under voluntary control. Voluntary control. So you can consciously control that. So you're not like... Uh, you know, some animals, right, can just pee anywhere, right? You have to kind of evaluate the environment and see if you can uh, urinate. And the urethra, so the urethra 
once the, the urinary bladder is open, urine is going to come out and enter the urethra and eventually uh, reaches the exterior of your body. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, the information is right here. So urinary bladder uh, contains two sphincters. The internal sphincter is smooth muscle. It's under involuntary control which means you cannot consciously control this muscle. Once the urinary bladder is full, it's going to send signal to the brain and the, the, the brain will open the smooth muscle, the internal sphincter. However, however, we do have an external sphincter which is made of a skeletal muscle. And if you remember from the um, neuromuscular system that the skeletal muscle is under voluntary control so that you can consciously control whether you want to open this sphincter or not right if you get into a bathroom yes open it but if you are in a public place that's not appropriate to urinate then you are going to control this um, external sphincter you're going to keep it closed and you can see that both will have to be relaxed right for micturation so basically, micturition means urination. All right, now let's look at the kidney structure and the function. So like I said, the, all, all these important functions that we talk about, maintain the balance, get rid of the waste, um, the, all those important functions are actually performed by the kidneys. And again, most people have two kidneys. Very, very rarely, some people may be born with one kidney, but that's very rare. So when you look at the kidney, it has this kind of bean shape, right? So the kidney can be divided to two main regions. Now, of course, there are some other minor regions, but since uh, the key study menu doesn't mention those structures, I don't think those structures will be on the test. So uh, I think you only need to know the two main regions. The first region is the outer layer, which is called the renal cortex. Now you do need to know what renal means. Renal means uh, things related to the kidney. Right? So the uh, renal cortex is this outer layer. And in this layer, you have all those kind of blood vessels. Uh, when we do dissection, they use dyes to kind of dye the, uh, the arteries and the veins so that when we open the kidneys, we can actually see those blood vessels in the cortex, the renal cortex region. Um, this is also uh, where, you know, the, the blood is uh, primarily filtered, right? Because there are uh, a lot of glomeruli, you know, from the nephrons in this region. The second major region uh, is this inner layer. It's a bit wider. So that's the inner layer right here. So that's the renal medulla. So in renal medulla, there are a lot of uh, ducts a lot of tubules that can, uh, you know, perform reabsorption and concentrate urine. So that's a renal medulla. All right, now for the urine, that's no, for urine, for the kidney, uh, you can see that there's this renal artery, the red one that will come into the kidney, and then it's going to further branch, right, into smaller arteries and arterioles. So the renal artery is going to bring in the fresh oxygenated blood into the tissues of the kidney. And uh, once the cells utilize the nutrients, utilize the oxygen, now the blood becomes deoxygenated, right? And the deoxygenated blood is going to be drained by the renal vein. Of course, the smaller veins first, and then everything merges into this major renal vein. So the blood is gonna, the deoxygenated blood is gonna come out, right? Um, out of the uh, the kidney and enter the renal vein. All right, so that's the uh, blood situation for the kidney. Now, another uh, very good reason to talk about the the blood in and out of the kidney is that this is the source. The blood is the source for, for example, metabolic wastes that the kidney is going to filter and take out, right? Because when you metabolize, all the cells metabolize, right? And the cells will get rid of the uh, metabolic waste and those waste molecules will 
diffuse into the blood. So the blood is actually carry all the metabolic waste into the kidney. And then the kidney is going to filter blood and it's going to take out all the uh, wastes from the blood and then put the waste in urine. So that's kind of the general picture for the kidney to perform, to kind of remove metabolic wastes. So that's all about excretion. <clears throat> All right, now the excretion is tied to urine production because those metabolic waste they will end up in urine. Now for excretion, the kidney is going to get rid of a lot of the wastes. The major wastes are nitrogenous wastes. So when you look at this term, probably notice, oh, nitrogen, that's the element nitrogen, right? So nitrogenous just refers to things that contain nitrogen. So the main waste is going to be urea because again, remember urea really comes from metabolizing proteins, right? Proteins are made of amino acids and the amino group is removed from amino acids. So you can see there's a nitrogen right there. All right, now about homeostasis. So the kidney maintains the balance of fluid, right? Because it takes out uh, the water from the blood. So uh, when you look at urine, urine is mostly blood, right? So where does, sorry, urine is mostly water. So where does the water come from? The water comes from the blood. So when the kidney filters the blood, uh, metabolic waste come out, but inevitably some water will also come out and becomes a part of the urine. Electrolytes, uh, again, the blood carries all those electrolytes, those salts, right? So some of the salts, especially if you have excessive amount, then they will come out and they will be, you know, be part of the urine. Okay, now kidney is also the site where the active form of a vitamin D is produced. So that's another function for the kidney. Now I haven't seen any questions on vitamin D and the kidney but since it's mentioned in the study manual, um, I thought we should uh, mention that real quick. Okay, now let's look at uh, the structural and functional unit of the kidney because this will help you understand how kidney works. How does kidney filter the blood? So the uh, functional units are called nephrons. Nephrons, so the T study manual does talk about nephrons, so I think um, this will be kind of important to go over. So the kidney will have a, you know, millions of nephrons. Now each nephron is a little factory that produces urine. Okay. So each nephron is kind of a little factory where urine is produced. Now nephron can be divided into a few parts, a few parts. Now for simplicity, since T's study manual does not go into detail, so I'm just gonna kind of divide it into two main sections. The first section is called a glomerulus and it's right here. So there's kind of uh, like a ball structure. So that's glomerulus in glomerulus and it's really kind of a ball of blood vessels. So you can see the blood vessels kind of uh, are all formed here, right? So this ball of blood vessel brings in blood to be filtered, okay? And how does this filtration works? It's really kind of due to the pressure in the blood vessel, right? You have a fluid going through the vessel and this generates pressure, right? You can think of as, you know, your blood pressure. So this blood pressure is pushing some of the substances out of the vessels, right? Again, uh, remember we talked about smaller blood vessels uh, especially capillaries, their walls are very thin, so things can definitely come out, can leak out. So with that blood pressure, things like uh, water, uh, small molecules like electrolytes, and also you know amino acids, uh, glucose, uh, metabolic waste. Those are all you know very small molecules, organic, inorganic. They can come out, and then there's a collecting duct uh, right here. It's called a Glomerular capsules, so all the things will enter this capsule. And this will be the initial urine. So this is also called filtrate. So filtrate is the substance that 
um, comes out of the, the, the filtration process. All right, now the filtrate, you know, including all that water, salts, small organic molecules, including metabolic waste, all that filtrate will go through the second part of each nephron, which is a bunch of tubules, a bunch of tubules. So that includes a proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule, and in between them, in between them, there is this loop of a Henle, or some people call it a loop of nephron or a nephron loop, it's the same thing. So this is proximal because it's closer to the glomerulus, and then this is going to be the distal, okay? So all these tubules, they will reabsorb some of the important things in the initial urine, in the filtrate. For example, they will reabsorb most of the water because water is precious. You do not want to lose um, too much water uh, through the filtration process. Uh, and in fact, the filtration process, the glomerulus does take out a lot of water from blood. But don't worry, most of the water will be absorbed and you know some of the other precious molecules such as glucose will also be reabsorbed. Usually you do not see glucose uh, in the urine. Now the final urine is usually made up of mostly water around, if I remember correctly, around 95% of water and it does have um, salt, which is electrolytes. Urea, remember that's the main metabolic waste from proteins. I did, I did see a couple questions on this, so make sure you know the urea comes from uh, metabolizing proteins and some other metabolites, but, um, but remember urine should not contain any glucose unless you have diabetes or if you have some kind of kidney disease. Urine should not have uh, proteins, again, uh, unless you have some certain conditions. There should not be any blood cells in the urine, including erythrocytes, which is the right blood cells, right? Or leukocytes, which is the white blood cells. So those things should not be present in the urine. I haven't seen any questions on what should not be in the urine, but you might want to be prepared just in case if they ask that question. Uh, the other structures in the urinary system are very, very simple. Uh, they don't do too much. They either just transport or, you know, store things. So ureters, we uh, talked about ureters uh, previously. So they kind of connect the kidneys with the urinal bladder, right? So they're really just kind of transport urine down to the bladder. We talked about this previously in the uh, digestive system. The wall of the GI tract has layers of smooth muscle, right? And then the contraction of smooth muscle, which is known as peristalsis, can push things down the tract. Uh, this is also present in ureters. Urinary bladder stores urine. Uh, and then we'll talk about that. The bladder is under the control of two sphincters, right? External is voluntary. You can consciously control the internal, which is made up of smooth muscle is under involuntary control. You cannot consciously control that. But both sphincters will have to be open for the urine to come out of the bladder. Okay, now the last structure in the urinary system is urethra. Now urethra uh, in males is a little bit special because urethra in males goes through the penis. So you can see the picture right here. So for males, urethra is a lot longer than female urethra. So that's why you know females tend to get UTI, urinary tract infection, than, than males because the urethra is much shorter. Right? So it's easier for our bacteria to kind of get um, deeper into the urinary system and infect the bladder or the kidneys. Now, urethra in males, it transports both urine and sperm. Right? So this is kind of where uh, there is a conjunction between the urinary system and the reproductive system. Urethra in females, however, only transports urine. All right, now how do you, the urinary system and the cardiovascular system work together? Um, the teeth study manuals mentioned a couple of things, so I'm kind of summarizing things here. Now, kidneys do help maintain the blood 
pressure. So that's very important. That's a very big thing, right? Blood pressure is super critical. Um, so there are two kind of aspects about this. Um, the T study menus kind of put a lot of weight on this aspect where, you know, kidneys secrete a hormone called a renin and renin can regulate blood pressure. So I would definitely recommend that you remember this particular hormone made by kidneys um, and it, it's involved in blood pressure regulation. A second thing that I think is kind of important is kidneys also regulate the balance of fluid, right? It maintains the balance of a water or fluid. They're really the same thing. And depending how much water is in your blood, it can influence the blood pressure, right? If you have a more fluid in your blood vessel, then you have a higher blood pressure because you have a more fluid pressing on the blood vessels. So uh, more fluid, more blood volume, and more blood pressure. If kidneys get rid of a lot of body fluid, then uh, it's going to decrease the blood volume and it's going to decrease blood pressure. All right, um, kidneys also produce another hormone, which is called erythropoietin or EPO, erythropoietin. Erythra means red, right? Poietin, poiesis usually means uh, production. So this hormone can stimulate the production of the red blood cells. So I'll give you one scenario. If you go to live in a much higher altitude area, uh, Charlotte is really, has a really low altitude, right? Um, I can't remember the exact number, maybe 400 feet, maybe. If you go to Colorado, let's say you go somewhere that um, has an elevation of 12,000 feet, right? So the air is thinner, less oxygen available. So now it puts a little bit of pressure on your body. So your body, you know, in order to meet the demand of oxygen by all your cells, the body needs to make more red blood cells to transport oxygen. So in response, your body will have kidneys, you know, make uh, erythropoietin, which will stimulate or promote the red blood cell production so that you have more red blood cells to work to transport oxygen. Um, kidneys basically filter blood, right? Because from metabolism, your blood is kind of full of a metabolic waste that needs to be removed right so kidneys basically filter blood remove all the waste so when the blood leaves the kidney the blood has a much much lower amount of metabolic waste uh, it's much cleaner and if you think about this process uh, i don't know if you are familiar with the dialysis you know we have a dialysis machine to filter to, to cleanse uh, patient's blood right so the dialysis machine is really kind of like an artificial kidney it filters blood to take out the metabolic waste. And usually because the patient's kidneys are not working, right? So that's why they have to go to dialysis. Now, on the other hand, the blood pressure contributes to the filtering of blood in glomerulus. Uh, we kind of touched on this just a little bit. Remember in glomerulus, it's kind of like a ball of blood vessels, right? Um, and it, there is some space, the capsule right there, there's some space. So the filtrate is going to come out into the capsule, right? And that's what we call the, the filtrate. So what pushes things out of the blood? And that's the pressure, right? That's the blood pressure. Uh, so think of um, a balloon. If you fill the balloon with some water, uh, it's okay, right? It might not leak out. But if you put more and more water in the balloon, eventually you may see you know, a little amount of water coming out. And that's because the internal pressure in the balloon is getting higher, right? It's increasing. And eventually that pressure can kind of overcome the, the material, right? And then push things through the material. So it's a kind of similar uh, mechanism as what's going on in glomerulus, the blood pressure helps filter blood, right? Helps push things out um, to become the filtrate, which is really kind of the initial urine. Oops. All right, now let's look at some practice problems. Number one, which of the following organs functions to maintain fluid balance? The answer is the kidney. Fluid balance, water balance is performed by the urinary system. 
and it's really done by the kidneys. The other structures, like I said, they just transport urine or stores urine. They don't do much else. Number two, which of the following parts transports sperm in males? The correct answer is urethra. Urethra. So in males, urethra goes through the penis, so it transports both urine and sperm. Number three, which of the following organs filters blood and produces urine? Correct answer is kidney. Number four, which of the following structures stores urine before excretion? That's going to be the urinary bladder. Number five, glomerulus is located in this region of the kidney. Glomerulus is located in the outer layer, which is the renal cortex. That's it. Good job, guys.